Hi everyone, my name is Abby Housen and I am doing a My Ecology presentation. The title of my presentation is, Is Global Warming Affecting the Great Barrier Reef? And what we're going to really dive into in this presentation is we're really going to focus on what the Great Barrier Reef is, the importance of the Great Barrier Reef, you know, what global warming is and how it is truly affecting, you know, almost everything globally. Sorry if I come up to the screen. Um, my slideshow presentation is right behind the camera. So if I come up, I am clicking next for the slideshow. So I'm on um, the same page if you're watching the video and looking at my PowerPoint. So the Great Barrier Reef. The reef contains an abundance of marine life and compromises over about 3,000 individual reef systems and coral caves. The Great Barrier Reef has become one of the world's most sought after tourist destinations. And um, I imagine most of you know where the Great Barrier Reef is, but it's off the coast of Australia. The Great Barrier Reef is one of the seven wonders of the natural world. And this reef extends in roughly a northwest, southeast direction for more than 1,200 miles, which is 2,000 kilometers, and at an offshore distance ranging from 10 to 100 miles, um, which is 16 to 160 kilometers, and has an overall area of 135,000 square miles. And then on the, if you're looking at this um, PowerPoint presentation, on the bottom right is a picture of the Great Barrier Reef. So the importance of the Great Barrier Reef, it is currently listed as a World Heritage Site for multiple reasons, uh, predominantly for its biodiversity, the list of organisms that rely on the reef for survival is endless. The Great Barrier Reef also has the largest population of dungongs, which is a sea cow. However, this species is listed as vulnerable to extinction. And seven, or sorry, six out of the seven known um, turtle species in the world live at the Great Barrier Reef, and some are listed as critically endangered. And if you're looking at this, um, Slide on the bottom right is an overview picture of the Great Barrier Reef, and you can see the size of this reef. So the questions that we're really gonna focus on in this presentation, the first one being, is global warming affecting the Great Barrier Reef? The second one being, I'm sorry, that was the first one. The second one being, is coral bleaching an effect from global warming? The third one being, have there been any extreme events on the Great Barrier Reef due to global warming and climate change? And what effect does climate change and global warming have on these organisms and species located in the ecosystem of the Great Barrier Reef? So throughout all of this, um, all of my articles and sources that are cited at the end of this presentation um, all include a methodology um, that includes their process and their plan of their um, studies that they conducted. So throughout all these articles that I used and found for, to get all this data, the teams used samples collected in the years 2002 to 2009 from five populations of Acropora millipora along the latitud latitudinal range of the Great Barrier Reef, and importantly, maximum summer temperatures, which was the major cause of bleaching, which equals the related mortality of the coral, followed, followed the latitudinal gradient with one notable exception, one of the near shore populations from the central uh, Great Barrier Reef experienced summers as hot as the lowest latitude population examined throughout this data that we will talk about later. The teams have developed a um, predictive model of polygenic adaptation in a system of multiple interconnected populations that exist in a heterogeneous and changing environment. So for the first question, is global warming affecting the Great Barrier Reef? Global warming has been a major cause of the destruction of the Great Barrier Reef. The warming of the waters are the main cause of cor coral bleaching, which is killing the coral population. The temperature anomalies have made it very difficult for the organisms and species in the water to survive on these dying corals. And if you're looking at this slide on the bottom right is a picture that I've input of um, bleached and dying coral. 
So again, for the same question, is global warming affecting the Great Barrier Reef? Climate change and global warming have been listed as external factors that are affecting the future existence of the reef. Since global warming is an external factor that is damaging the reef, there are many different studies that are being conducted to learn more and devise a plan that helps the future coral stay alive. So this photo that I have on the bottom right shows healthy to dead coral from the month December 2014 to August 2015. And as you can see by this picture, it is just changing at a rapid speed. So again, for the same question, is global warming affecting the Great Barrier Reef? While there are other factors that fall into place that also affect the livelihood of the reef, global warming has become the top issue in killing the reefs. Global warming has been viewed in many different extreme events of coral bleaching and how that affects an entire ecosystem. This picture below represents, on the bottom right hand corner, represents coral bleaching and how it makes a once vibrant ecosystem look like a graveyard. And you can see in this image, you know, the water is still so blue, but the coral are just bleached white when normally they have orange and they have just different vibrant color and a school of fish just living in this ecosystem. There's just nothing here. It is just bare. So for the next question, is coral bleaching an effect from global warming? Coral reefs worldwide are suffering high mortality rates from severe thermal stress episodes induced by acute ocean warming events. The 2016, which this event we will talk about later in the PowerPoint, the 2016 global coral bleaching event was severe. 93% of the northern um, stretch of, Austra of, of the Australian Great Barrier Reef, coral was bleached and by June, 60% of this coral was killed in association with heat stress. So on the bottom right hand corner, I do have a picture included and it just shows um, the length of the Great Barrier Reef and it has it in different colors and it has a little text box out by those different colors to really just show you how it really affected that coral and the ecosystems and lice that live in that um, Great Barrier Reef. So again, for the same question, is coral bleaching an effect from global warming? While heat stress impacts bleaching risk, coral reef health and resilience also integrates multiple environmental and biotic factors. Resili resilience is predetermined in part by ecosystem health that depends on historical disturbance events, the present day water quality, um, which that is exposure to runoff, and the functional uh, reducency of the resilient reef biota. And if you're looking on this slide as well, on the bottom right, I do have dead coral. It is just brown, you know, it looks very just brittle. So for the same question, is coral bleaching an effect from global warming. We have previously demonstrated, the teams um, have previously demonstrated the presence of genetic variants conferring high thermal tolerance in a naturally warm and low latitude population of the um, Acropora and Millipora on the Great Barrier Reef. So the Acropora and Millipora was really the species that they focused on throughout um, these articles that I found. So they further, ble they further explore bleaching by examining local environmental data and local stressors such as degraded water quality and potentially reduced coral resi resilience to um, episodic thermal stress and drive bleaching occurrence. So again, is coral bleaching an effect from global warming? So the analysis that um, the studies presented in the articles demonstrated that um, anthropogenic GH, GHG force trend and regional SSTs had a dominant impact on bleaching results in the record high part in the year of 2016 when the bleaching, um, major bleaching event occurred. 
And this accumulated heat over this period, you know, a combination of natural climate vari uh, variability and the 2016 El Nino episode um, also contributed to the ocean's conditions, resulting in the bleaching, hence the 2016 extreme thermal stress was due to the added effects and um, of the natural variability and the ENSO imposed on a re uh, regional anthropogenic increase in the SSTs. So if you're looking at this slide on the bottom right hand corner, I have figure 28.2, which is from the main article that I use uh, for my data. And it shows satellite derived observational products of JFM um, precipitation anomalies in the coral sea region. Um, and then the colors, so it goes from white and it has dark royal blue with purple in it to dark red. And this shows the extreme event articles. And then to the right, it has um, little charts that will also um, show you and represent the data that they found due to this 2016 extreme, um, you know, ocean heating water event. So again, is coral bleaching an effect from global warming? This assessment indicates the risk of future bleaching may become more likely with further greenhouse warming um, and the local environmental factors such as water quality upwelling will have increasingly limited capacity to uh, remediate and anthrop anthropogenic divers of temperature-induced bleaching. Furthermore, explorations of divers of reef bleaching require explicit consideration of biological processes, environmental stressors, ENSO, like we talked about before, dynamics, anthropogenic warming and their interactions as bleaching events likely have different drivers. So for the next question, have there been any extreme events on the Great Barrier Reef due to this? So just like I said before, the 2016 ENSO episode was among the most severe recorded and may have impacted the Great Barrier Reef bleaching. The Coral Sea ocean conditions resulting in the 2016 Great Barrier Reef bleaching were the result of a confluence of increased risk from anthropogenic NGHG forced trend in regional SSTs, like we sp um, spoke about before, weak, the El Nino forcing and natural variability. So if you're looking at this screen, on the bottom right hand corner, it shows a piece of coral and it is dyed in different colors and it shows you living, bleached, and dead. And, it show, and it's titled Coral Bleaching Effects, or sorry, Coral Bleaching Events. And it just describes, you know, what has to happen for these stages to occur. So again, have there been any extreme events on the Great Barrier Reef due to this? The teams examined interrelated climatic and environmental conditions in the Coral Sea that altered the risk of um, Great Barrier Reef bleaching in 2016. The 2016 extreme thermal stress was due to the added effects of natural variability and the ENSO imposed on a regional anthropogenic increase in the SSTs. The integration of multiple irrelated Interrelated factors by reef ecosystems represents important considerations for attribution of bleaching. So again, have there been any, any extremes, extreme events on the Great Barrier Reef due to this? So the teams have investigated the influence of the anthropogenic greenhouse ga gases, GHGs, and ENSO conditions that warm the SSTs in the wider Coral Sea region that, encompass it, that encompasses the Great Barrier Reef. Although the Great Barrier Reef occupies just a fraction of the Coral Sea region, its seasonal temperatures are highly correlated. So the team used CMIPF climate model data 
to examine bleaching from a client perspe climate perspective. The team also used observational data from the HAD, C-R-U-T, for gridded and NOAA, OISS TV2 observes sea surface temperature data sets. So for the same question, have there been any extreme events on the Great Barrier Reef due to this? The teams have studied demonstrates that the GHG warming of regional sea surface temperatures was the primary increase for the risk for the 2016 um, Great Barrier Reef bleaching. This assessment indicates the risk of future bleaching may become more likely with further greenhouse warming and that local environmental factors such as water quality and upwelling will have increasingly limited capacity to redeemate anthropogenic divers, drivers of temperature-induced bleaching. So what effect does global warming have on the ecosystem have on the, sorry, have on the organisms and species located in the ecosystem of the Great Barrier Reef. Larger fish, fish may have migrated south, but northern fish that remained may have become weaker and more likely to be picked off by predators. Now, new research has found that reef fish populations shift in direct response to the temperature itself, and that changes caused by warm water are actually faster and more widespread than the effects of habitat loss. So for the same question, researchers looked at data from monitoring surveys, efforts that seek to count fish and um, invertebrate populations as well as coral covers at 186 sites along the Great Barrier Reef and at isolated reefs in the Coral Sea. Sections start bleaching and dying off, food webs experience um, severe disruption. These disruptions have ripple effects that can reduce food supplies for the smallest crustacean all the way to the larger fauna like dolphins and whale sharks. For the same question as well, the Queensland government recently approved the development of Australia's largest coal mine and a marine ecologist who's been working on the Great Barrier Reef for 30 years did not take part in this study. The coal mine will only pump will not only pump more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, it will also expand a local port that is near the Great Barrier Reef and could damage the ecosystem further. So what effect does global warming have on the organisms and species located in the ecosystem of the Great Barrier Reef? These are the limits. You know, some of those fish actually benefit in the south because they like the warmer water. Whereas in the north, if you're closer to their thermal limits, just a little increase will have a huge effect on these fish. The conclusion is obvious. If we're going to save the Great Barrier Reef, we must act on climate and we must take the action now. So the overall effects of global warming. Global warming and climate change is something that is causing major effects in the world. The Great Barrier Reef is one of the seven wonders of the world and this cause is having a huge effect on it and threatening the future of the reef. Global warming has also been the cause of extreme weather events that have occurred, glo that have occurred globally and global warming has been the cause of glaciers melting, ocean um, acidification, coral bleaching, and the list goes on. And on this slide, if you're looking on the bottom right hand corner, I have a picture of a polar bear on a small, small, small piece of ice because everything is just melting around it. So were there any missing pieces in the data? There were not any missing pieces of data that I you know, found in this research. I found many different pieces of data and charts and tables that help present the information very well. And all of my sources are located um, at the end of this presentation. So for future studies, there are a ton of future studies that are being um, completed for these reefs. Since the Great Barrier Reef is such um, an attention seeking place, there's gonna be studies on it all the time to figure out you know, how to save this piece of land. So the current studies that are happening, these researchers are conducting air and water surveys of the Great Barrier Reef. They then compared the last, the latest and most severe bleaching event in 2016 with the two other major bleaching events that affected the Great Barrier Reef in 1998 and in 2002. So for your discussion, coral reefs worldwide are suffering high mortality rates 
from severe thermal stress episodes induced by acute ocean warming events. This issue is not just in the Great Barrier Reef, it is a part of a much bigger picture. The scientists and teams that were a part of all these articles that were found in my sources section were a part of a much larger view that is trying to help the warming of water and the factor of ocean um, acidification and how to protect the living aquatic species and the coral that are trying to survive. So for the conclusion, the warming of the oceans is affecting many different factors within these waters, from the reefs to the aquatic organisms to the acidity levels in the water. These issues are becoming major events where large portions of the Great Barrier Reef are being bleached and destroyed. More attention needs to be brought to this issue to help create more protection for these reefs that are major parts of these oceans. The Great Barrier Reef is such an important part in the ecosystem and in the world. That is why there has always been studies and experiments being conducted on the reef until this problem is solved. The Great Barrier Reef needs protection and new signs that will help preserve what is left of the reef. And global warming has had an effect on the Great Barrier Reef, but science and people are not going to let it completely be taken away without a fight, a fight to protect. So now I'm on my sources page, and I think I have about 11 sources that include all of the data that I've spoken to you about and that are um, that is represented in the PowerPoint slideshow as well. So if you have any questions or comments um, on my PowerPoint, my email is right there. And thank you so much for watching.